Hello there fellow code adventurers. In this tutorial we'll explore the incredible benefits of CLI tools and deep dive into the Click CLI library for Python. But wait, why should you care about CLI tools? First off, let's talk about the need for speed. CLI tools are just faster than those clunky graphical user interfaces because they don't waste time rendering fancy graphics or dealing with pesky mouse clicks. With CLIs, you can also automate repetitive tasks like a boss by writing scripts. Say goodbye to those tedious hours of manual work and say hello to more time for coding adventures. You can tell your experience to your heart's content and make your workflow incredibly unique. Click is a Python package for creating beautiful command line interfaces in a composable way with as little code as necessary. It's highly configurable, but comes with sensible defaults out of the box. It aims to make the process of writing command line tools quick and fun, while also preventing any frustration caused by the inability to implement an intended CLI API. Some of Click's main selling points are arbitrary nesting of commands, meaning that you can really customize the way that your functions are laid out and accessed. You, you can also generate automatic help pages for the CLI tools and their functions using doc strings. Yeah, yeah, we get it. It's pretty cool. Let's just jump into some Code. Okay, if you haven't done so, the first thing you're going to want to do is install click with pip install click. I already have it, so this should actually be good to go. First thing we're going to do is import click, and also we're going to import Olama from Langchain Community, which you can install with this command on the screen. We're going to instantiate Olama and pass it in that new meta Llama 3 model, which we will be running locally. Now, let's say we had a very fancy function called get joke, and we had a prompt that said, tell me a funny joke about cats, and we're also going to make sure that it returns only one joke and no additional text or data. This is how we call it, and we're going to print it. Under normal circumstances, we'd probably do something like this, and then we would run the file and get our joke. Converting this into a click command is as simple as using the decorator at click.command. And by just adding that decorator, we already have help documentation already generated. Adding in arguments is as simple as doing a click.argument. We can actually name this, so we can call it name. We can convert this into an F string and say that we want jokes about cats named name. So now if I run this, and do the help, we see that it's actually calling for the name variable. And if I run this with an argument now, we automatically get that passed into that new click command. So why did Bobby do the, why did Bobby the cat join a band? Because he wanted to be the percussionist. Now, if you want to add something optional, we could just use click.option. We can call this prop. We can give it some help documentation. Help equals uh, props for our cat to play with. I'm going to change this up a little bit to make it easier to parse this stuff into. So we'll just add that after the fact. And then we'll say if prop, we'll actually call this props props and convert this into an F string. And now if we run our help, we can see that we have props and it's a text and it has the help documentation already generated with it. So if I run it now with Bobby props bananas, I'll say playing with, uh, why did Bobby the cat start playing with bananas? Because it was a perfect peel, not a very good joke, but you get the idea. We can start adding stuff like this. We could also tell it what type it is. So we could say type equals click dot string and that way it'll know what type it is when we run the help again we'll see that it's text if i were to change this to int for example then it would say integer so i'll change that back to string if we wanted the props to be a very specific set list we can actually do click dot choice and then now we could pass it in a list of options bananas waffles burritos yeah it's all food i'm hungry don't worry about it now if we run the help we'll also see that we get the list of choices in the help documentations so you can see how easily this is actually to build up and add more things now what if we wanted more elaborate jokes what if we wanted jokes about other things so i'll go ahead and rename this to cat jokes we can put this all into a jokes group. So we can define jokes and this will be click dot group and now what we can do is change this instead to jokes dot command and then we change uh the function that we're calling to jokes and when we get the help we can see that it's listing the commands that we have access to and if i actually type that one in so cat dash jokes then we get our cat jokes options so it'd be easy enough now to add people jokes by duplicating that and then now if i call that help again we can see that we have two different commands for this cli tool if I call people dash jokes, Jamie dash at props bananas. Why did Jamie, Jamie and Jamie all get kicked out of the banana playground? Because they were going ape again. Now, what if we wanted to have this return a certain number of jokes? 
Well, we can make a new one called quantity and we could say it's click dash int range. So we can get a range of ints. We could set a minimum of one with a max of 10 number of jokes to produce. And now what we could do is for i in range of quantity, And now if I call it with a quantity of five, it actually tells me, hey, that's the wrong thing because I have a typo. So it actually gives me the most similar recommendation. So this is a little difficult to read on the screen, but you can see that it gave us a bunch of different jokes about Jamie and bananas. Now if we go ahead and add some doc strings to this, and then I'll copy over that to cat jokes. We'll say generate a joke. And if we call help again, now we actually get that documentation right inside of there. So generating help documentation is extremely easy because you're just generating doc strings and comments that are probably already gonna be there in your code anyway. So that was just a very quick demo as to how easily you can convert your scripts that you've already made into things that you can share around and make a lot easier to use with documentation for you and your peers and your workers and you know, whatever. But the main selling point here is that there's not a whole lot of work that you have to do. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like and comment. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what you hated, what you didn't hate. And if you're curious about making actual CLI tools, be sure to subscribe to the channel for when the videos for that are available. So I will catch you guys in the next one.